We caught the muskrat, and now we're skinning it and fleshing it to tan it. With a spoon. That's the easiest way, so you don't dig in too deep. If you use a draw knife, a lot of times it digs deep. And that'll take your fat off like that. Just run the spoon across. We're also going to flesh and tan this raccoon that we got earlier in the season. We caught this raccoon and we're getting ready to flesh it out right now. Brandon's going to show you how to do it. First thing you got to have is a sharp uh, draw knife for the back. And for the belly you got to have short or duller draw knife because it digs in. You can press pretty hard for the back. But don't go long strides, like real long strides, or you end up digging in. Just work it down. The back's pretty tough. That layer of fat, you want to take that off. That thin layer that sticks underneath here. Okay, we're on the belly here. We just use a dollar knife for finish it off, especially around the legs. You want to do shorter strokes. Just press, take that stuff off. Alright, we're going to start the tanning process and a lot of times we clean the hide off good, we get rid of all the fat and what we do is we put salt on it. That's the first stage. Now you can use like alum and salt, but i tell you what, if you want a good soft hide, I use the Trapper's Hide Tanning Formula. It's the only way to tan your hide. Um, because you're going to get a whiter look. It's, the old school is alum and salt or, or extract from corn, but I'm telling you, do this. If you want to keep the fur on, use high tan formula. And this is called Trapper's High Tan Formula. You can buy this. Look it up, look it up on the internet. It's made in Nevada. And I'll show you here. High tan. Alright, what I'm going to do here is 
take the salt and heavily coat this pellet. And you just salt it and then you roll it up. So you gotta soak that pellet in salt like that. Alright, I'm rolled up in there in salt, real tight with salt. And I'm gonna come back tomorrow and we're gonna scrape off the old salt and put new salt on for another day. We let this raccoon sit in salt for 24 hours and now we're going to scrape the salt off and replace it with another layer. Brennan's going to show you how we scrape off the salt with the wood bar. Just take that, it'll clean it right off. And we'll just go the whole way around the pelt until you get the skin like that. You'll see it, it's all off. And just go the whole way around and take it all off and we'll put a new layer of salt on here. Once we get new salt on, we're going to roll it up and let it sit another 24 hours. Looks good, Corey. This thing ought to tan nice. Now me and Brandon are getting ready to put on the new layer of salt. And rub that in really good all around. We've got a muskrat down here. We're going to rub that pelt real good. We're going to go all around the pelt every side of the pelt and then we'll come back in another day here one thing I wanted to say was um, that the fresher the hide the better now we just skin these so we know that the pelt's going to take the salt really well and the tanning solution this is what it should look like when you're done with the salting okay I'm going to go ahead and scrape the salt off after we put it in salt the second time. You just take that piece of wood like that and scrape it. Alright, now I got two of these red cups full of salt and I'm going to put a half pound of salt in the hot water bucket here. I got four gallons of water, so a half pound for each gallon. I'm going to put two pounds for the four gallons and we're going to soak it. All right, we got the salt water solution. For every five gallons, you put one cap full of uh, Clorox. So we're gonna put a cap full here. That kills the germs there, boys. All right, so we got this uh, soaking in this hot water. We're gonna let it soak for about eight hours here. And as you can see, it turns everything white. Uh, don't worry, you'll have to uh, take some more of the flesh off later. I took the hides out of the bucket and I'm gonna wash them twice in dish soap here. And on both sides, the fur and the flesh side. And before you do that, you could go through them and take some of this membrane off with a knife just run your knife and cut the membrane off and then we'll take some more off later But go ahead and wash it twice and then we'll hang it up here to rinse me and Brandon are getting ready to put tanning solution on our furs with a paintbrush we got the tanning solution and we warmed it up in warm water we sat in there for about a half hour and then we dried the pelt out flesh side out I turned it back around and it's like dry but kind of dry and it's you know damp to the touch so we're ready to put the tanning solution on. So we'll spread it out with a paintbrush just like this. Put a big thick layer on there. Alright guys, now that we got the tanning solution on. I turned the fur side out, that will help dry the fur from when we washed it. And we'll let that sit overnight, um, 16 hours. And then once that's set into the, the hide, the flesh, then we'll turn that around. In about two or three days, you'll notice it starting to tan. And then you just work it for about the next week. Uh, it'll shrink up maybe a little bit, but you want to try to get that hide worked and stretched, keep it soft, 
and you have to maybe go over that little membrane that I showed you, cut some of that membrane off. And then, like I was saying, you could do it with alum and salt, uh, like four, alum, four ounces of alum and two ounces of salt per gallon. And you could soak it in that, kind of like the same as what we soaked it in. But that's mainly for thinner hides. Uh, they used to do brain tanning. And uh, like I know one old guy used to, uh, as soon as he got an animal, he'd kill it, cut the brains out while they're still warm after he skinned it. And then he'd rub the warm brains on the pelt and uh, he'd carry the pelt back with him home. And then when he got back, he'd use um, hardwood ashes and water and he'd work, let it sit in that and then he'd work the hair loose. But like I said, this tanning solution is the best thing I found. You know, you don't have to set schedules, you know, around your tanning and it makes a nice soft job. So, um, there's a few things I wanted to show you guys. I hope you guys learned a little bit. Um, maybe we can learn a couple more things going down